Hello everyone, Sen here. On today's episode, we're gonna be scaling our game. So it isn't super small as it is right now. So we open the game. As you can see, everything is pretty small and it's really hard to see. So what we want is our game to scale to the full size of the window. And to do that, we are going to go into our init file. And here, it's super easy to do. So we need to come here and say SDL logic uh, set logic uh, set render logical presentation and what this function does is um sets the width and the height of the logical rendering output so um the renderer will act as if the window is always the requested dimensions scaling to the actual window resolution as necessary so this is going to scale our game to the necessary resolution and so um, this function takes four arguments. The first one is a renderer, so let's pass that. Then the second one is a logical width and a logic logical height. So this would be, um, let's say, our base canvas. I'm gonna try to explain that um, after I finish implementing the function. So the last one is the render logical presentation. You can get all the render logical presentations by saying real logical presentation and we have the five options the one we're going to be using is letterbox and yeah so let me explain how this works so here we can set the logical presentation to 320 by 100 180 and you may ask why this resolution i'd say that these are the two best options um and i'm gonna explain why now so what we're doing is just saying that our window is a certain size in this case 320 by 180 and that's the base resolution for our game so we are going to create our assets ui everything based on this resolution and then this resolution is going to get scaled and the reason we're using either one of those one of these two is because these two scale perfectly to um, 720p uh, 1080 uh, 2k 4k so these are, are pretty good for that because um, those are the most common resolutions so now after we at that we can run our game and you'll see that we have uh, black bars and that's because we have we don't have the same aspect ratio we also see some weird lines here so we'll fix that too and also the house looks blurry so so the first thing um why we have black bars uh we have black bars because the aspect ratio is different the aspect ratio is different here and here we have four three here and 16 by nine here so let's change that we can make our game 720p and now we won't have black bars but we still get blurry textures and weird lines over there so what we're going to do now is go into our map let's see and change so we're on init map here into our function init map and then if you remember when we made our player we use um, this function set texture scale mode so it scaled without getting blurry and there's one thing we should do here that i forgot to do when we made this episode and that's that this uh, function needs to run just once so we can run it after we uh, load the texture and we don't need it to run every frame that it renders so we can just copy this function and go to our map and here we are uh, loading our texture, then checking if the texture load, loaded properly. So in the case that it loads properly, we would just... Um... Prefer here, we should, we should just continue, okay. We continue. And so here, we don't need this else statement. Oops.
perfect. Now, what we want to say is that um, we know for sure that the texture loaded properly. So we can just copy this, paste it here. So our texture, uh, we want to scale uh, with this scale mode. And now if we rerun our game, we will see that everything is looking pretty fine. Our character looks good and our map looks good too. There's no errors and the pixels look pretty clear. So now that we've done that and knowing that the we've only done five minutes, we can do something more and that's um, changing our entity system. So to do that, let's go into our entity.c and we're going to create three functions. One to create entities, another one to delete them, and a third one to swap them. So we can just interchange uh, entities easily. So let's create the first one, create entity. That is going to take an entity as an argument. And we're going to say if entity count is less than max entities. Oh, what is that? <laughs> oh my God, max entities. We want to include our entity, the one that we're passing as an argument. Oh, not here. Scout. In the index of the entity count. So, and the entity. perfect. And then after that, we want to increase the entity's count. Great. In the case that we are already at max entities, we just want to log maximum number of entities, which that's about it. Perfect. This uh, function is going to create an entity. So that's great. We don't need more than that. Then we want to create another function, delete entity. This one is going to take um, an int. That's going to be the index of the entity. Let me just do this and then we can say if index is less than zero or index is equal or bigger than max entities want to just return so let's say the log index is not bad We can okay, we can pass the actual index, so just say like this, and yeah, perfect. And we return now. What we want to do is before deleting the entity, we want to run the cleanup function from that entity. So if it has memory allocated or something on there. We want to first clean up and then delete the entity. So to do that, we would just do entities index. So we are accessing the entity and then clean up. And we just run the function. Perfect. And now what we're going to do is instead of deleting, we don't want to make our arrays our array uh, smaller. So what we're going to do is just shift all the values at the right of the index to the left. So we would just move everything to the left by one. So this uh, index gets overridden. So to do that, we would just create a for loop in i equals the index. Now we're going to delete. And then while i is less than max entities, minus one, we want to keep doing i plus plus. So now what we're going to do is accessing entities 
i equals entities i plus one so this is what i said before we're just changing the current index for the next one and finally after doing that we have uh, shifted all our entities one to the left starting from the index that we want to delete we are just going to reduce the entities count let's decrease it by one and perfect we have our delete entity and our create entity functions now we need a third one the last one it is going to be the swap entity and actually entities because it's two so we would have an index one and an index two so these are the two arguments the index that we want to swap the two index that we want to swap so same as before we want to add a check so if index one is less than zero or index one is bigger than max entities or one or index two has some of those conditions either we want to just say I see a log invalid just and pass both this one let's perfect and we return from this perfect and if that's not the case and the two uh index indices are valid we're just going to say entity temp we're just going to create a temporal copy of one of the entities we could have the index one for example here so we create a copy of index one and then we override index one since we already have a copy we can just come here and say index one equals entities index two perfect so what we're doing here is just overrunning index one with index two and now we can use the temporal copy we created up here and say that entities index two equals entities index uh, sorry temp, the temp variable perfect and after that we have our three functions here so it's time to implement them so we would do that by just going into our player.c and we can just here instead of returning the player as an entity we can just change this to void and do the following we don't return anything and we call init sorry no create and we don't have entities here so we are going to import them player h we have it oh sorry yeah we had exported um, the three functions so let's do that we just copy this to our entity h delete entity create entity and swap entity this one takes um oh this is like time or something and same here this takes index perfect now we are exporting to um the three functions and we can just come here and say init uh not sorry create entity and we pass our entity perfect 
So now we're creating the entity from inside the init uh, functions. So we don't need to, to come over here in init and just delete this. We can delete those two and we have to do the same for the map. So we can just go into our map. And then here, instead of returning this, change it to void and we also need to change it in our map age. So void. And same for player age. This doesn't return an entity anymore. It is void. So now in our map C, we just need to here um, create entity map e. perfect great so now if we run our code maybe it works maybe it doesn't seem okay we're getting our code uh working but it's just a green screen <laughs> so that's not good let's go into our entities so Page first, we're going to delete this. We don't need this anymore. Or do we? Mm -hmm. Actually, we need those. Yeah, here. Okay, let's That's weird. That's not working. Oh, yeah, I don't know. Uh, now I know why it's not working. Yeah, we didn't have to. We had to delete how we needed those things, but we still need to init them. So init map with a render state render and init layer. No, no, perfect. Now it should be all working. Great. Um, I think those uh we needed to implement some kind of better system to match our entities and I didn't quite like having we still have these external values here which I don't really like to be honest but at least right now we are not writing to those from outside of the entity.c we are just reading from them so we can iterate through all the entities so now that we have that uh, I think that's enough for today and I'll see you on next episode.